people would be very happy about this. Others would be like, ah. Oh. And so the ones going, ah. Oh. I'll put, <laughs> I'll be back, like pretty much after the holidays. These holidays are crazy at work. There's a lot of sales going in. A lot of people are ordering things, and we got to make sure they get all their products. And it's my job to be around there to make sure that happens. You know, so I'm putting in 16 hour days, uh, some 18 hours. There's been a lot of depth at the company from the materials, and it's stupid. It's like, why steal some? You got a great opportunity to make money. They're giving you free overtime unlimited overtime you can make tons of money all that merchandise you can buy yourself why steal it I mean it's just stupid now you're just gonna lose a job for what a, a sports t-shirt or a memorabilia this doesn't make any sense to me uh, now let's move on from that to boxing because I probably won't be around for a while uh, the Khan Madonna fight I pretty much broke that down that a lot of people seem to forget but Dania was knocked down three times by Victor I mean Victor Ortiz before he even got knocked out. Uh, Ortiz and Ortiz just quit. He didn't really get knocked out by Madania. Even though he was hurting the fight. But Madania just really got schooled by a boxer like Chop Chop Corley. That's why they took this fight. Um, before, that's why a lot of people are like, why would Amir Khan take this fight with uh, Madania? But when he before would not never take this fight. Similar to Oscar De La Hoya and Fernando Vargas. De La Hoya wasn't going to fight Vargas until he saw the Trinidad fight. Then he saw the fight after the Trinidad fight and said, oh, okay, yeah, we, we got to make this Vargas fight now. We got to get him now. And that's what fighters wait for. They wait to see flaws. And they wait to see wear and tear. But if the name is still high, run off the name and make your money and dominate and look like you're just as good as the first guy to beat him. Um, wow. So, dealing with that, we get back to the Khan situation. Amir Khan is a pure boxer. He has a lot of speed, very fast, and he can get there first. So, he throws sharp punches. He doesn't really have to hit that hard, but Madania won't be able to take that many blows. Chop Chop Corley pretty much owned Madania until he got dropped in one of the rounds. But he owned him. He owned him that fight. And he screwed him because Chop Chop is just a journeyman. He wasn't supposed to get the win anyway. It's supposed to have been a fight to give uh, Madania some work. But he showed people that this guy is very beatable. And if anybody boxing or have any type of boxing IQ, they can dominate this guy. And that's why Amir Khan is taking the fight. Because a lot of people was like, wow, he's taking this big challenge. Not really a big challenge. The big challenge to me is Victor Ortiz and Lamont Peterson. Um, I just think uh, Victor Ortiz, his uh, size is going to be just too much. Uh, he's going to come in the ring about 150. And he's going to be huge that night. So, I see another big, big win for Victor Ortiz with his power. Just naturally being a bigger guy. And, Abnamarez and Vic Darchini. Oh my God! <laughs> you talking about an explosive fight? That's what I'm talking about. Now, Evan Mars is the guy that everybody thinks is Amir Khan. He runs into this problem all the time. People are like, oh, you're Amir Khan, or they think he's personalizing on it. But he uh, fights for Mexico. He was in the 2004 Olympics, and he happens to be the only fighter Golden Boy has had from the beginning that can win a world championship. Okay, Golden Boy developed him from the Olympics on. Now, once they took over... With Adnamara's career, this could be their first product champion. Okay? That's why he's in this tournament. So I do give Golden Boy some credit, but I'm sticking their fighters in this tournament. Top rank pulled their guys out. Pull Nonito Dunier out of this tournament. Now, Nonito Dunier would do nothing most but fight in this tournament. But Bob pulled them out for a reason. Because this fight, this tournament, 
presents a lot of risk for these bad ways. But that's why I respect all of them. Rebecca, Johnny Perez, all these guys, all of you, you super dominant fighters over there. I respect every last one of you. Because you guys said, look, we're the best bantamweights in the world. Let's war it out to see who is the best. So it won't have to be another guy from the other side saying, hey, you haven't fought me. And that's what I'm talking about. That's stepping it up. That's saying we want to get this done to see who is the best welterweight. I mean, Bantamweight is. And I'm all for it, because these guys, uh, their managers are pretty hard to work with, but they came to the table to make this fight for the people, and the people should be happy. And when the holiday season over, you're going to see me make a lot of videos. I might find time to sneak a video in, and I might not. And... That's about all I can say on that situation. Um, I respond to a couple of questions I got. People were like, why are you bringing up Manny Pacquiao's personal, you're personally attacking his uh, financials. We don't care about that. We only care about the boxing. If that was the case, why didn't you feel like that when Mayweather was around? When Mayweather case is going on. You know, for the people that say, well, why don't you talk about Floyd in his case? I've done that when it was around. I covered it. Go scroll the videos. So now when I bring up the fact that I just shed light on a fact, I didn't make the lawsuit. Even though I should fax a copy to the IRS and show that he showed, he's got tax fraud. Writing over uh, money to his wife's name. She's not on the contract. That's the voice. I know what you're doing. That's tax fraud, buddy. Put it in my wife's account. We'll put it in my life. But I ain't gonna show up anyway. Because I'm baby pack, yeah. Never saw a contract I didn't like. <laughs> I should just draw up a contract and send it to Manny Pack, yeah. I'll bet he's at it. <laughs> this guy's ridiculous. And, uh, no to the question where the guy said, will I be attending? I'm not attending any fights right now. I'm like, I'm on the grind right now. It's the end of the year. I get my taxes done. This is where the bulk of the money is going to come in at. So I can't attend any fights right now. I'm going to be at home watching them on cable or TiVo. Seems to be the only way I can get it done. So on that note, I won't keep y'all long. Enjoy the fights. Leave me some insights, um, post your questions up in, in the personals, and um, if you put your number up, what I'm going to do is, if you put your number in the personal messages, I'll call you one day if you want to like do a video, and if it's good enough, I'll record it, and I'll put it on YouTube for you, then we'll put our discussion on there, so that way the fans, the voice can get out there, and then I'll, I'll talk to you about boxing, and then we'll put it up on YouTube if it's good enough. You know, that's another thing I'm looking into, so we'll do that, but not right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, D-Style, I'm going to call you. And shouts out to the guy from Fight Hype, once again, uh, the Mexicutioner, for uh, that uh, blog he put out about me. That was cool. I like that. I'm glad somebody understands. <laughs>